You know, some ideas in physics are so strange that they follow you everywhere. You think about them in the shower, before you sleep, even while you're walking outside. And for me, one of those ideas is Schrodinger's cat. A thought experiment so simple, yet so disturbing, that it forces you to rethink what reality even means. Imagine this. A closed box. A cat inside. And the unsettling idea that, until you open the box, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. It sounds ridiculous. But this is genuinely what quantum physics suggests. Why this thought experiment exists. In 1935, Erwin Schrödinger was not trying to be provocative. He was frustrated. Quantum mechanics was working, incredibly well, but its interpretation was disturbing. Particles didn't behave like objects anymore. They behaved like possibilities. Electrons didn't have positions until measured. Atoms didn't decide their fate until observed. And Schrödinger asked a dangerous question. What happens if we take these rules seriously and apply them to the real world? Not to atoms, not to particles, but to something undeniably real. A cat. Inside the box. Here's the setup. Simple, almost cruel. Inside a sealed box. A living cat. A radioactive atom. A Geiger counter. A hammer. A vial of poison. If the atom decays, a purely quantum event, the detector clicks, the hammer falls, the vial breaks, and the cat dies. If the atom doesn't decay, the cat lives. So far, nothing strange. But here's the problem. In quantum mechanics, the atom does not have a definite state. It is both. Decayed and not decayed at the same time. A superposition. And because the cat's fate is directly linked to that atom, the entire system becomes entangled. As long as the box remains closed, quantum mechanics treats the cat as alive and dead simultaneously. Not metaphorically, mathematically. That's the point where your intuition collapses. The real issue, measurement, the cat is not the problem. The box is not the problem. The problem is measurement. In classical physics, measurement reveals reality. In quantum physics, measurement creates reality. Opening the box forces the system to choose. The wave function collapses. One outcome becomes real. Until that moment, the universe refuses to commit. It's not that the cat is secretly alive or dead, and we just don't know. According to the theory, the cat has no single reality yet. Only probabilities. How physicists try to explain this, this is where interpretations come in. Copenhagen interpretation. Before measurement, nothing is definite. Reality exists as probabilities. Observation forces a result. Many worlds interpretation, nothing collapses. The universe splits. In one branch, the cat lives. In another, it dies. Both are real, just not in the same universe. Einstein's objection, Einstein believed quantum mechanics was incomplete. He argued that hidden variables must exist. As he famously said, God does not play dice with the universe. Schrodinger agreed. The cat was meant as a critique, not a belief. Decoherence. Modern physics suggests that superpositions disappear when systems interact with their environment. The world is too noisy for cats to be quantum objects. But even decoherence doesn't fully explain why we see one outcome instead of many. Entanglement. The cat and the atom. The atom and the cat form a single quantum system. They are entangled. Before observation, you cannot describe one without the other. This isn't philosophy. Entanglement has been experimentally verified, again and again. Einstein called it, spooky action at a distance, and he was right to be disturbed. Does consciousness matter? Some early physicists wondered if consciousness collapses the wave function. Does reality become real only when a mind observes it? Most physicists today say no. Collapse happens due to physical interaction, not awareness. But here's the honest truth. We still don't know what measurement really is. And that mystery remains. 
Why the cat still matters today. Schrodinger's cat is no longer just a paradox. It's the foundation of quantum computing, quantum cryptography, quantum teleportation. Every modern quantum technology is built on the same mathematics that puts the cat in two states at once. The experiment exposed a flaw, but also opened a door. The human lesson, for me, Schrodinger's cat is a reminder of humility. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to us. Reality, at its deepest level, is not solid. It's probabilistic. It's informational. It's strange. And maybe that's okay. Because the goal of science is not comfort. It's truth. And sometimes, truth looks like a cat that refuses to decide whether it's alive or dead until you open the box. And here's the part that most people miss. Schrodinger's cat is not asking whether quantum mechanics is weird. Everyone already knew that. It's asking something much more uncomfortable. At what point does reality stop being quantum and start being classical? Because somewhere between an atom and a cat, something changes. Or at least, we think it does. From atoms to cats, where does the quantum world end? In the laboratory, we can easily place atoms, electrons, even small molecules into superposition. We do it all the time. It's routine, but a cat? A warm, breathing, biological system made of trillions of particles? That's where our confidence starts to crumble. Quantum mechanics, on paper, doesn't care about size. The equations make no distinction between an electron and a living organism. If the math is taken seriously, everything should obey quantum rules. And that's terrifying, because it means the classical world, the solid, predictable world we live in, might not be fundamental at all. It might be an emergent illusion, a statistical average of countless quantum events. Probability is not ignorance. This is another subtle but crucial point. In everyday life, probability means we lack information. If I flip a coin and hide the result, the uncertainty is in my head. But quantum probability is different. The uncertainty is not about what we know. It's about what exists. Before measurement, the system genuinely does not possess a definite value. There is no hidden answer waiting to be revealed at least according to standard quantum mechanics. Reality itself is fuzzy, and that's a radical shift in how humans have understood the universe for thousands of years. Why this bothered Einstein so deeply, Einstein wasn't confused by the math. He helped build it. What disturbed him was the philosophical implication, a universe where outcomes are not determined until the last moment. To Einstein, reality had to exist independently of observation. Otherwise, physics would become a description of knowledge, not of nature. And Schrödinger, despite being one of the architects of wave mechanics, shared that discomfort. The cat was his way of saying, if this theory is complete, then our concept of reality is broken. And maybe, it is. What modern experiments are telling us today, nearly a century later, we've pushed Schrodinger's idea much further than he ever imagined. Scientists have created superpositions involving molecules with thousands of atoms, mechanical resonators, electrical currents flowing in opposite directions at once. Each experiment whispers the same unsettling message. There is no clear boundary, no obvious line where the quantum world ends and the classical world begins. Only increasing complexity. Only increasing interaction with the environment. The cat problem hasn't disappeared. It's become sharper. Why this matters beyond physics. This isn't just a technical issue. It changes how we think about existence. If reality is not fixed until interaction, then the universe is not a static stage. It's a dynamic process. Events don't simply happen. They crystallize. An observation, in the broad physical sense, is part of that process. That doesn't mean humans are special. It means interaction is fundamental. A quiet, unsettling conclusion, Schrodinger's cat survives because it refuses to give us closure. There is no final answer. No interpretation has won. 
No experiment has killed the paradox. And maybe that's the point. The thought experiment forces us to live with uncertainty, not as a failure of knowledge, but as a feature of reality itself. The universe, at its deepest level, is not a machine ticking forward with certainty. It's a field of possibilities, constantly negotiating what becomes real. And every time we open the box, every time we measure, observe, interact, we are not just learning about the universe, we are participating in it.